What better way to dive back into 2021 What's New than enhancements to the SolidWorks part weldments? When working in the weldment environment, it's common to have various sizes of weldment members. The horizontal tubes in this welded frame are 2x2 two two tubes, and the vertical tubes are 3x2 two tubes. The weldment trim extend tool is used to trim tubes to each other with various options for corner types. Since these tubes are of different profiles, the equal angle miter does not produce the desired result. In 2021, there's a SolidWorks flush miter, which allows you to do just that, so that the tubes are aligned equally to each other and the members are co terminal. This also propagates to the mirrored components. Also new to SolidWorks 2021 is the ability to use equations inside of custom properties. This opens up a lot of options for conveying information within the custom properties within PDM and within your general part file. You have options with the global variables, functions, properties, and in this case we're going to create a cost estimate by taking the general mass of the material and multiplying it by the overall cost per pound. You can also go into your cut list and do exactly the same thing. So within cut lists, we're allowed to use the total length as an equation to take both the quantity of weldment uh, beams as well as the bounding box in order to create an overall length value for the total weldment. You can use this for purchasing or to uh, simplify your workflows. Also within 2021, we have the ability to add colors and appearances from outside of the SolidWorks window. So in this case, if we wanna change the color of our weldment, we can go ahead and actually minimize SolidWorks and use the color picker to pull the color from a website, in this case, the Solid Experts website. So no longer do you have to go and hunt down those RGB codes. Instead, you can select the part and just use the drag and drop feature to select the individual color that you want to apply. Uh, this can also be very useful in, for determining RGB colors. So in this case, if I wanted to figure out exactly what this color yellow is, I can go in and see what the RGB code is for the color used on the Solid Experts website. These enhancements will save you a good bit of time when applying color and also when trying to convey information about custom properties through the use of equations. Now, that's not the last enhancement to weldments. We also have an improvement to structure systems that is very, very useful for saving time. So here we have a structure system set up with some primary members. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add secondary structure members in between our component. So here we'll just go ahead and select the two different beams to work between. And now for positioning the profile, new in SolidWorks 2021, we have this ability uh, with the triad in order to move, locate, and set up how we want our secondary structure members to align. Uh, this gives you a lot of freedom to use structure systems for the majority of your weldment tasks, never having to use conventional weldments or complicated 3D sketching when instead you can drag and drop components to the location you want. You can even set the pierce point to be in different locations. And when you go ahead and exit that structure system or that weldment profile, we are able to set our trim options in order to trim with the planes of the body. In this case, significantly simplifying your weldment experience. So with SolidWorks 2021, we have enhancements to both structure systems and conventional weldments, as well ex as extended functionality to use custom property equations. Now, I'll go ahead and pass it over to John to talk a little bit more about assembly productivity. Thank you, Stephen. Those improvements in weldments are pretty impressive. I just think that color picker thing uh, going outside of the application itself is, is just neat. But there's even similar tools and, and productivity enhancements for assemblies as well. So there's improvements in how uh, mates are edited and created, enhancements for export definition or uh, interference detection, and more. So let's have a look. Here, we're going to create a new mate. And as we pull up the um, 
Property Manager, notice that we now have tabs instead of individual uh, drop lists for all the different items. And we can easily toggle between mechanical, advanced, standard, and so forth. A little easier uh, UI to navigate. Now here for this particular mate, one of the things that often comes up, you flip the mate alignment, it asks you, do you want to break the others or not? And 50-50 chance, you get it say no, you get it wrong. Most of the time, yes was the appropriate choice. So now there's a new system option to just specifically default it that way. So here in assemblies, again, change mate alignment. Now you can just say always do it. And now you don't even have to answer the question, it just automatically does it. So again, now that same operation, change the mate alignment on our washer here, and it just corrects everything else accordingly. No more red and yellow in your assembly mate tree. One of the other options here is now as we create the slot mate, one of the nice things it does is here it's automatically centered and we can do a lock rotation on a slot mate. This is going to greatly improve your assembly performance as you go further and further um, with larger and larger assemblies. Similarly, that centering operation is now a document property that you could set. So per an assembly uh, itself, or maybe on your assembly templates, you can set that option. And previously, SOLIDWORKS has always had the option that for a component pattern, the instances of the components could in fact have different configurations than the seed. And sometimes they're appropriate and sometimes not. So now we have an option to uh, synchronize all those after the fact in the part and properties, or upon creation, we can synchronize those up front when you create the pattern and basically force that to stay in effect. Now when we change the configuration on the seed component, the remaining two instances just follow along automatically. Interference detection has been available for some time and was added to multi-body parts last year. Here we're going to calculate it for our little assembly and to show off some new options here. We can view the, the amounts and, and the locations of those as always, but now we have a new graphical way to kind of share those results with others. Here we can put it in a spreadsheet type report and we include the thumbnails of where those uh, interferences actually occur. And it kind of creates something that you might be used to if you use Treehouse a lot and use the uh, report output from there. Here we're going to go and, and open that Excel file we just created um, by doing that export from interference detection. And now we have a nice graphical report of amounts, parts, and highlighted instances of where those interferences occur, some of which might be quite intentional for like a pin at assembly operation, but others we may need to review with other design engineers to decide who's got the ECR for that particular component. Again, very nice improvements for uh, assembly productivity in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Uh, easier um, editing and creation of the original mates the slot mates with the lock rotation is going to be nice for a lot of folks. Um, synchronizing component patterns. Again, you have the flexibility to have independent um, instances or synchronize them as you need to. And of course, the ability to basically just flip the mate alignment and keep everything um, in sync without errors on your uh, assembly feature trees. And the nice uh, Interference detection reports, again, good for a stand-up design review meeting, allowing you to more quickly get through the work of making the best assembly you possibly can with SOLIDWORKS 2021. Now that we've seen those uh, productivity enhancements for assemblies, we're going to look at similar uh, productivity enhancers for drawing files as well. Most notably, detailing mode is further enhanced in SOLIDWORKS 2021 over its introduction in 2020, Sketch relations are improved, 
and VDA balloons now uh, can be more accurately represented in your drawings. Detailing mode was introduced last year and it's already improved in, in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Again, it allows us to open even this uh, multi-sheet uh, large assembly drawing in a matter of seconds. None of those 2,300 pieces are, are fully loaded here in the background. It's just the sheet and drawing views and we can manipulate and change sheets and, and do a surprising amount of detailing edits live um, here in drawing mode, in detailing mode. Here even correcting the, the notes rather than just simply adding them from the, uh, the design library. Any sort of edits you, that you want to make to a note are, are perfectly valid. Here this lower view has a nice um, broken view uh, arrangement to it. Now we can do the same thing on the other view. So we can add break views um, to existing views here in detailing mode. You can choose the style. You have all the same controls you have when the drawing is fully um, loaded or even in lightweight mode. You will add the three breaks to make it uh, as similar as, as reasonable to the, the view below it. And even beyond that, we have some ordinate dimensions here that didn't quite get carried through. We can add to ordinate, choose the appropriate edges and center marks accordingly, and update the proper representation of this view, even correcting the alignment of them here live on the fly. Moving down to this lower corner, even something as uh, interesting as a detail view. Now remember, the full model geometry is not yet loaded in memory. We're able to create this detail view and further annotate that. Um, so this is a really nice enhancement for detailing mode. Even picking up the whole callout from the whole wizard feature uh, correctly annotates itself. And because, again, this is a detail of a broken view, we get the appropriate dimensioning display um, with the foreshortened dimensions in both x and y directions. But even here for existing dimensions, if we need to change any of the formatting, even down to the tolerancing, precision thereof, all that can be adjusted here in detailing mode. And remember, all these changes that you might do here in detailing mode are fully live and displayed any which way the drawing happens to be loaded at a later date. Here adjusting the um, leader display is also fully valid in detailing mode, arranging that circle dimension uh, from the edge to its proper center. Adding new dimensions works just as though the drawing was fully loaded. And no matter how we choose the, the entities, endpoints, lines, uh, uh, part edges, it doesn't matter, it all works. Here we're gonna add a um, VDA balloon. These balloons are popular for inspection, particularly in the, in the German automotive realm. And we'll just create the balloon with some text first, and then we're gonna go ahead and, and create that style. Um, VDA balloon style. And when it's placed here now, we do have uh, additional options for the tilt, the rotation, and so forth, um, making it in, in the arrangement that suits us best. Here's some sketch geometry in this view. Oftentimes, previously, uh, relations on sketch geometry and views would be incomplete or you couldn't use all of them. Now in 2021, they all work. Notice that it picks up the automatic centers of items here, and even the relation to midpoint of the lower line gets fully carried through in uh, the drawing view and sketch arrangement. Here, coming back to the original sheet and zooming out, everything performs very, very quickly. In a matter of seconds, we're able to fully detail um, this drawing improvement. Again, detailing mode is one of my favorite enhancements, actually, both for both SOLIDWORKS 2020 and it's even better in 2021. Quick sketch relations is a nice improvement. And VDA inspection balloons, even for those not necessarily in the automotive industry, are, are a valid item and, and make your drawings look all that much more professional down the road. Next, Stephen is going to show some uh, rendering enhancements for the visualized product renderer. 
Thank you, John. Since the introduction of SOLIDWORKS Visualize, creating eye-catching photorealistic images from CAD data has never been easier. And in 2021, the integration between SOLIDWORKS CAD Design and Visualize is better than ever. Starting off in SOLIDWORKS, you can see we have multiple configurations with an active display mark, which will enable SOLIDWORKS 2021 to export that data into SOLIDWORKS Visualize. So just opening this file op up over in Visualize, you'll see that when we import the model, we have access to all of the different configurations that were available inside of SOLIDWORKS. So in this case, it's a very smooth way of leveraging the work you've already done within SOLIDWORKS to speed up the rendering process. Now that we have our suppressed cable configuration, let's go ahead and look at our part. All right, so we're missing a few appearances or we wanna change the color of a couple things. We've always been able to drag and drop appearances inside of SOLIDWORKS Visualize. So in this case, we can go into the appearances for the square robot and go ahead and add a black coloring. But new in SOLIDWORKS 2021, you have the ability to double click on any part and it will automatically select the appearance. So here we're able to go in and copy that appearance and quite easily double click on the part without ever changing your filter and activate the appearance. This is a huge time saver inside of Visualize in order to apply appearances on the fly. Let's go ahead and take a look, closer look at this individual component. This part's going to be a 3D printed bracket. So let's make it look like a 3D printed bracket. So first off, we can go ahead and mess around with the colors. So in this case, if we know that it's going to be printed out of a more black colored material, we can update the color. But new in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we are able to use displacement maps. So here we have a 3D print bump map texture, a bump map being a pretty usual term for rendering. And all we have to do is set the amount of depth we want to simulate and create a displacement map. Note we have a little bit of triangulation. So in the texture mapping, we simply need to set the displacement density or how we're breaking down our displacement map on our model. This will provide us with a texture similar to that of a 3D printing. Uh, now note that we already have one from a previous project, so we can just reuse that by dragging and dropping that 3D print texture onto our component. We can also go in, remap how our texture is being applied, so in this case, make it planar, and also set the degree to be a 45 degree angle, which is similar to how most FDM prints would be oriented. The important thing to focus on when rendering is the small details, because that's what everyone will notice. So we'll go ahead, grab that uh, material here, and jump over to another configuration of the bracket. And we can go ahead and apply the material on the fly. Again, using that double click method new to SOLIDWORKS 2021 to automatically select the appearance rather than having to use filters. All right, now let's go ahead and make some section views of this component. New in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we have an extended set of options for displaying the cut plane inside of SOLIDWORKS Visualize. So in this case, we can go ahead and show exactly what's happening inside of our model and create photorealistic renders of not only the exterior, but also the interior of our parts. Uh, we can also set up multiple cut planes to be intersecting the same part at the same time giving you a snazzy look to your conventional rendering. All right, one more very cool tool in SOLIDWORKS Visualize 2021. We have an extended amount of options when it comes to using the tune filter. So in this case, we're able to give your components, give your parts a little bit more of a lighthearted look and to show them in a simplified manner. This is great for presentations. And we have a ton of different options for exporting filters and tools that you can use. So in this case, we have a ton of different rendering layers that we can use inside of Visualize 2021. And so looking at that, we have a 
bunch of types, alpha and depth and composing and beauty in order to make your product look and feel the way you want it. So in this case, you're able to really leverage the different styles and the different uh, approaches inside of SolidWorks Visualize 2021. So you can really take your 3D model and bring it to life and to provide that extra level of realism inside of your modeling. Uh, there's also enhancements to the integration with, um, with the NVIDIA AI. So we have the ability to take your conventional SOLIDWORKS models and really leverage those as the first stage of your marketing inside of SOLIDWORKS 2021. Whether you're creating photorealistic renderings or simple parts for design reviews or even complex assemblies for marketing collateral, SOLIDWORKS Visualize 2021 makes creating world-class renderings painless, exciting, and limitless process for any user. Now, let's go over and talk to John about the enhancements to another visualization tool, Composer. Thank you, Stephen. That visualized trailer for the robot is truly impressive. I like that a lot. However, there are times when a video, no matter how slick, isn't truly gonna do the job. And there's still a need for illustrated and written, well done te technical documentation, be it assembly manuals, installation instructions, warranty um, items, and that sort of thing. And that's where Composer really shines. It's the product to take your technical publications to the next level. Here in, Sol in SolidWorks 2021 and Composer 2021, there are a number of key enhancements. Um, we can uh, support multiple uh, SolidWorks configurations much easier than before. There are options for loading and saving your document properties accordingly, and just some general UI improvements in terms of selecting, highlighting, and otherwise illustrating the work as you're doing it on the screen. So here in Composer 2021, we have some new options for, as we open the files, how to handle even the SOLIDWORKS documents with variations of configurations and other items. So here we'll set the file type, find the SOLIDWORKS default, use that profile, and upon choosing, in this case, an assembly, if we go to the SOLIDWORKS tab here, before you could get the current assembly uh, configuration or all of them, now we can pick and choose. So particularly in the case like this where we've got detailed sub-assemblies and a variety of configs, we can pick and choose the three or four or five that we might want. Now in this case, we do get a new configuration tab and we can switch easily between any of the items to show that particular display. And now we can create a multifaceted document for a variety of uh, product families in this case. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, there's always been a, a variety of rendering modes in, in Composer, and here we're going to do a nice flat technical. It's one of my favorite is actually for the, the appearance of the finished document. And it's always good to start with a basic uh, isometric view as your starting point. Go ahead and do that. Also on our document properties here, before we finish that up, we can control what the viewport looks like. So again, we move in the stock gradient that's usually there. Um, 2021 adds improved controls for how the hidden edges are shown, what colors, um, what display types, and so forth. We apply that to our scene before we grab that first initial view. And as I click on the various elements, you can see the highlighting uh, occurring accordingly with the color settings there. But there's other uh, settings that we can apply as well. So here we're just going to uh, adjust the page size format. Um, in this case, I'm actually publishing to a, um, an online platform in the end. So here we're going to adjust the um, aspect ratio accordingly to give us that 16 to 9 uh, widescreen format aspect ratio. We can switch our units, of course, and so forth. Um, even though the part was designed in metric, we can display our final result in inches and so forth in the composing document. Now we've made all these adjustments, we can save that out now. And that can be saved and reloaded and, and run as the basis of a new documentation set. So we don't have to um, have a composer template per se 
we can save just the properties of this particular project file and uh, store that and reuse it as much as we want for uh, future projects down the road. So let's go ahead and, and finish that off and, and get that initial starting view going. And now we can see the, the different elements therein. Uh, we can choose the components from the assembly tree and so forth. Um, and we've got some ability to hide and, and select all, almost like isolate in SOLIDWORKS. And we'll go ahead and create a, a new view for that scenario. One of the other interesting things that's an improvement here is just we'll create some camera views and so forth. But on this initial view, one of the selections um, that's available, we can go and switch it to one of the other models, or configurations rather. And now that we're going to work with that a bit, we can actually undock that tab and dock it to one of the edges of the screen, you know, left, right, top, or bottom, where it's more accessible uh, while we work on creating some additional views here. So now we're going to grab the uh, twisted configuration here of the turbine uh, roller assembly, and we'll show that as, a, as an item for a view to create in the other documentation. It might be nice to have an explode view here, and one of the selection options we now have is the ability to select all the instances, um, in this case of the pattern blades, so we select one, it selects them all for us automatically. Now when we do our explode transformation, it all moves as one set um, and creates the appropriate view accordingly. And we stretch that out a bit and rotate around for a little bit better angle. And while they're in this position, we can still go ahead and label accordingly uh, providing our end customer with the appropriate notation, part numbers in this case, it could be other descriptions and so forth, uh, appropriately labeling the items that either need to be replaced or ordered as where items. I'll go ahead and create that. And again, we'll create that view and, and save that for our later documentation down the road. Now, one of the things of note here, as we scroll back and take a look at some of these other views, you know, perhaps we may have moved this accidentally as we were uh, creating some of our edits, but we've hidden those other components and it's not readily apparent where we stand in relation to those. Well, now there's a new preferences option that hope take care of that. We can turn on the highlighting and then highlight the invisible actors. This is a momentary thing and we're going to go ahead and apply it. And now what happens is as we click on those hidden items in the tree here, we see them relative to our item in the view. And that way we can verify where we are relative to our overall starting point without having to unhide everything to get to that point. Let's take a look at the completed uh, documentation set with all the, the views here. So now this project has been completely done and we've got the intelligent views, we've got the markers to them, um, we can transition between the views, have the icons that we can put in the uh, progressive document later, and these can be published into a PDF, a PowerPoint, or we're going to show in a little bit uh, a couple of different ways to view them with apps um, on your computer. So Composer Player is the desktop app, and this is provided with the Composer install all the time. And this is just highlighting all the controls and automation that we can have um, from that intelligent document. So even though Composer is a, is a technical pubs uh, sort of application here, we can publish interactive um, computer-driven uh, content as well. Here, going to that explode view and showing that out with the screws that we moved and so forth and coming home. 
all the navigation tools that you would uh, need are here in the player. But that's not the only way to go about it now. In 2021, we now have integration with the 3D Experience player, and we can upload our Composer SMG files to the platform and display them there as well. Now, you're not limited to sharing a Composer file in the player on a computer in your network. You can share this on the platform and enable anyone that you give permission to your uh, 3D player or the link to the, the 3D player account, the ability to view and um, run through the Composer animations and so forth. Um, fully online, all that's needed is a good web browser. Again, Composer 2021 has had a nice series of enhancements. The ability to pick and choose which configurations we're dealing with is a very nice improvement. Uh, loading and saving of the uh, document properties to make our projects more consistent throughout uh, the publication history and so forth. Um, displaying the hidden edges and stuff with more control and for color and type and, and display item. Being able to momentarily highlight those invisible items and verify where we are in kind of the publication space. And just the general UI improvements all make Composer 2021 a nice improvement and, and a good part of making really professional looking technical publications. Now, Chengping Lu is going to look at more detail on our uh, investigation robot here and how simulation aids the design of this particular uh, assembly. Thank you, John. We know how important it is to be able to configure our design, and it's good to know that we can now bring our design configurations into SonRix Composer for the documentation. We are now about to see some new features and enhancements on SonRix simulation that will help you validate your design much faster, more accurately, and more easily. This year, the performance is once again the leading enhancement in SonRix simulation. Let's start with some updates on the terminology used in SOLIDWORKS simulation. We won't be using the word contact anymore to describe an interaction between two components. We'll call them interactions. The user interface now matches the conventional industry terminology to make, to, so it makes it much easier to understand what we are doing in the analysis. Remember the no penetration interaction? It is now called a contact interaction to better represent what we have in real life. The allow penetration interaction has now been replaced by the free interaction. And we still have the bounded, shrink fit, and virtual wall interactions. We also have new properties for a bounded or contact interaction with the ability to use the gap range and stabilization region properties as a percentage or distance value, SOLIDWORKS simulation is now more robust because of the added stiffness that can overcome instability issues and it will take care of slightly imperfect geometries. Think about clearances between a bolt, nut, and plate just like in this example. They can be treated automatically saving you from inaccurate results and time spent troubleshooting the study. The accuracy has also been improved with integrated correction factors for contact interactions on cylindrical, spherical, and conical geometries. Bounded interactions also have been improved when components don't share common mesh nodes. Speaking about the mesh, let's see how this phase has been improved. This mesh took 24 seconds to complete, and it was done with SOLIDWORKS Premium. Let's now see how long it will take with Simulation Professional or Simulation Premium. Enhancements to multi-core processing for contacts and meshing have been added to Simulation Professional and Simulation Premium users. The same blended curvature mesh ba based mesh will be created with the same parameters. 10 seconds compared to 24 seconds. That, that's two times and a half quicker. In addition, 
simulation professional and simulation premium users will get access to a new diagnostic tool which allows to get a better view at poor quality elements by isolating them in the plot. We can also get the information on which entities are associated with these poor quality elements and automate the mesh refinement if necessary. Other performance related enhancements to, solve, to, to solvers have been implemented in SonarRix 2021. The FFE Plus solver can solve contacts faster thanks to the multi-core support just like what the other solvers can already do. The Intel Direct Sparse solver can handle larger studies, even problems with more than 4 million degrees of freedom. Also, the automatic solver is more intelligent now. Its algorithm has been optimized to better account for many variables to choose the best solver according to how the analysis was created. There you have it. With SOLIDRIX Simulation 2021, we, we have more new features and enhancements to add more flexibility and simplicity to help you better manage how you will solve your analysis from simple to complex studies. Speaking about management, you've probably been waiting for so long to see what's new in SOLIDRIX PDM. And for that, I give the floor to Benoit Bilodeau. Hi everyone, my name is Benoit Bilodeau and I will guide you through what's new in SOLIDWORKS PDM and SOLIDWORKS Manage in 2021. In SOLIDWORKS PDM, the integration in Windows Explorer has been one of the best features that SOLIDWORKS PDM offers. Now the integration with Windows 10 interface is not complete. You have access to the same icons in the ribbon menu allowing you to adapt your interface. To SolidWorks PDM. Also this year, one of the new things is the possibility to have access to column sets that will have been custom designed by your administrator in SolidWorks PDM. This way, a user can select any preset column sets, have access to the information needed at a certain time. These column sets are configured in the SolidWorks and PDM admin tool. Basically, uh, you can create now customizable columns, whether for quick search results, for file operation, for file list, and file details. You set them up the same way you used to do, choosing some variables and giving permissions to users as well as a preferred column set. Also, the new types of access and rights are available in the admin tool, allowing, allowing you to give some groups certain uh, access or rights to decide if they can view and modify these column set in details. New feature this year, more icons for the workflow states. It gives you a better visual cue of a workflow for the users. You can select these icons when you create your workflow. And this way, as you can see, more variety of icons. These icons are now available. You can see them in the state column straight into Windows Explorer. A new feature as well this year, the possibility to have access to the treehouse view in the where used and contains tab. You have more details of each part and you can view them in Excel and export them. You can also select these parts or drawings and do all kinds of file operation on them, whether it's check out, check in and changing state. In SOLIDWORKS now, new feature this year, well, it's the added integration between the SOLIDWORKS ways of managing bombs and PDM. Now when you exclude something from the cut list, PDM will understand 
and apply the same exclusion to its own bonds. This applies as well to reference parts like mirror. Also, the same happens when you promote parts in SOLIDWORKS. All these are now integrated in the BOM itself in PDM. Gives him a lot more function functionalities and flexibility to your BOMs. All this being managed as well in the admin tool. Also, some performance improvements in PDM this year. Let's now look at what's new in SOLIDWORKS Manage in 2021. As a project manager, you will have to deal with managing multiple projects. A good dashboard gives you information and insight of what has to be done. One of the improvements is the possibility to choose from a list when you need to add a project to the board. Once available in your Gantt charts, you might have the need to look at a load chart and add some more information on different tasks. As you do so, the project service in the back is going to update all the information automatically. For instance, if a certain task has been changed where the status is completed and added attachments to it, automatically, once you have done it, the stage, different stages will update automatically without having you needed to do a certain function to do it. It's automatic. As you go through, you have a real view of what's happening in your projects. Any attachment added to tasks will be automatically added to projects deliverables. Talking about tasks, you have now a quick access straight from the project to dashboards, allowing you to see in a glance all the information needed to take the right decisions. Also, something new this year is improvement with the tasks board. Task boards now allows you to group tasks by priority. You can easily move task cards from a state to another, simply dragging and dropping them in the proper position. And if you need more information on a certain task, you only have to double click on it and have access to this information. Some great new stuff this year with SolidWorks Manage is the possibility to have more flexibility managing bumps. You can now open windows side by side, allowing you some new functions as copying item from a window to another. This gives you a lot more flexibility when the, times come, the time comes to manage bonds. You can also copy from a record to another without having two windows open at the same time. You can review whatever you need to copy. Within the same bomb, there are ways now to cut and paste items to regroup them in other items. They become orange as they're about to be cut. And when you save your function, everything updates automatically. You can now even create new records from other. Makes it faster to simply recreate some items and add some operations from existing ones. And a function of dissolving also is here. 
allowing you to take sub-assemblies and dissolve them into parts. All this from within Manage. You can remove the unwanted records and create the exact bomb you need straight into Manage. In the web client now, you can have access to preview since it's going to be linked to, to the web preview of PDM. So very easy for a supplier or internally speaking, even in the shop to have access to all the information without the need to install hard clients. And talking about suppliers or customer, a new tool is now available that allows you to share by email and the customer will get simply access to download the file that you will send. That was it for SolidWorks PDM and SolidWorks Manage What's New in 2021. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Benoit. On the topic of PLM systems, let's discuss 3D Experience SolidWorks. 3D Experience SolidWorks is part of the Dassault Systems 3D Experience platform, but what does that mean for the actual SOLIDWORKS user? We're going to go ahead and look at the SOLIDWORKS side of 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS to get a better understanding of what it looks like for you. Inside of 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS, also known as SOLIDWORKS Connected, you'll notice that the user interface is predominantly the same. We have the ability to open our recent files, we can filter by parts and assemblies, and looking at the Ribbon, it's more or less the exact same as your typical SOLIDWORKS interface. I mean, it does say SOLIDWORKS connected rather than SOLIDWORKS, but the functionality is the same. Inside of 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS, we do have a couple of differences, one of which is going to be the add-ins. 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS does not have the same add-ins as your typical SOLIDWORKS, because the 3D Experience platform itself has many of these functionalities through the Dassault system brands. We'll be discussing this later today. Now, 3D Experience SolidWorks does have the ability to integrate directly into the PLM system, meaning that you're saving your parts, files, and assemblies to the cloud itself. That includes check-in, check-out functionality. You're able to open parts from the cloud, download the most updated revision, and you'll never accidentally be overriding data. So in terms of the differences, you're still looking at your typical open. And if you need to save components or parts to your desktop, you can as well. Looking at the ability to open files, you'll notice that we have the same functionality as typical SolidWorks. So being able to open as lightweight, resolved, large design review, uh, being able to use large assembly settings, all of these are pretty much the same across the platform and 3D Experience SolidWorks. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at something that's very different. When you're saving your data to the cloud, 3D Experience SolidWorks allows you to search and manipulate that data in ways that we've never been able to do inside of Windows. So for example, just searching the word nerf in this case, we can find all of our data. And that data is stored in a PDM style check-in check-out functionality, all based off of the Dassault system cloud servers. So you don't have any local hardware, you just have your content. When you save your files, they're saved directly to the server and open directly from the server. Also, 3D Experience SolidWorks or SolidWorks Connected is going to always be up to date with the latest version, meaning that you don't have to worry about rolling out updates to your company. Now, 3D Experience SolidWorks comes in three flavors, Standard, Professional, and Premium, something we're very familiar with, and Standard includes 3D Creator, Professional includes 3D Creator and 3D Sculptor, and Premium includes Sculptor Creator on top of Simulation Designer. Now, we're going to be getting more into the details when we talk specifically about the 3D Experience platform, but each of these offers provides the tools you need to do your job. So, 3D Experience SolidWorks is the SolidWorks you love, with platform integration and automatically pushed updates, that gives you more access to cloud data management, to task and collaboration and PLM systems, as well as more applications such as design apps, uh, simulation apps, and a ton of other content. 
So in terms of where we're going, we've discussed SolidWorks 2021. Uh, that's been this morning. We finished our on uh, our webinar. Those are going to be available on demand. This afternoon, we're diving right into the 3D Experience platform and how the 3D Experience platform is going to benefit your workflow. So tune back in and thank you for your time.